With Pokemon Scarlet and Violet shaping up to be one of the most exciting journeys into the wonderful world of Pokemon, with the ability to tackle the gym challenge in any order, one important question comes up. Will the gym scale or have a set level? Currently, the consensus is that there will be no scaling, based on what we've heard so far in terms of the leaks and rumors. Yet, some out there on the internet are claiming not only will there be no scaling, but that scaling would make these games objectively terrible, and that's something I'd like to talk about because I couldn't disagree more. Am I saying my points mean Jim's scaling is confirmed? No. But I'm saying I'm not ruling it out just yet, and that if it were in the games, it would make the games not only more interesting, but infinitely more replayable. Before we get started though, let me answer a quick question. What is gym scaling? In this context, gym scaling means the gym leaders will have different teams of different strengths, depending on how many gym badges you've already obtained, to make sure that the game gets more difficult since you can tackle them in any order. Older games didn't have to worry about this due to being a more linear path, with some exceptions, but with an open world game, it's a question that is worth asking. Now, I know some people are thinking, well, other open world games don't have scaling, look at Breath of the Wild. Please, do look at Breath of the Wild and see how the enemies there scale in strength based on the number of them that you've defeated. Yes, that's right, there is scaling in Breath of the Wild. but. Let's get back to Pokemon. So to get things started, let's take a look at the Scarlet and Violet website, because there are lines here that some people are interpreting as against scaling, but they ignore some of the information. Here, it does say that there's no set path to the gyms. You could purposefully seek out a stronger gym leader, or you can simply stop by a gym that happens to be located in a town you come across on your journey. This time you get to plot your very own path along Victory Road. Now, many have said that this line means gym scaling isn't in the game 100% confirmed. Everyone else is wrong or lying. But I don't see that. I see that you can choose whatever path you want. That, to me at least, says that there is some scaling involved. Plus, if you scroll up to here, it says that you can tackle the gyms in any order you desire. Right there. There it is. Now, I don't know about you, but that to me indicates that each gym should be about as strong as the others. So that way you can truly fight the gym leaders in any order. Being able to go up to gym 7 and find that your Pokemon are about 40 levels too low. Well, that certainly doesn't make me feel like I can do what the game claims. Any order. I could try to level up in the woods to take on the gym. But in most Pokemon games, if you don't have a certain badge, your Pokemon won't listen to you. Either that feature has been removed, or the gyms would need to scale, right? Now, to illustrate what I believe the problems are with non-scaling gyms in an open-world game, think of it this way. Let's say Pokemon Red was open-world and didn't have scaling gyms. You decide you want to fight Blaine first. So you go into the woods, grind up your Squirtle into a Blastoise over the course of many hours, and defeat him soundly. Then, well, then the rest of the game is easy. You go to the rest of the gyms, knock out each of their Pokemon with one hit each, with only Giovanni being a real threat. Thus, while technically being able to challenge the gyms in any order, it doesn't make for a game that stays fun for long. There becomes no challenge to the game past the first gym. Now that hardly sounds like playing the game how you want to play it. For most players, it will likely end up meaning that they end up going from the lowest to highest, and while you could go for Blaine first, it's ultimately unrewarding past that initial rush. Now, let's look at it from the other perspective. Scaling gems. Let's go back to Pokemon Red. You go and you fight Blaine. He gives your Squirtle as much of a hard time as a Bulbasaur fighting an Onix, sure. But then the game continues. You go on and you take on the rest of the gems, ultimately leading you to face Brock as the eighth gym leader. He's added Kabutops, Omastar, and Aerodactyl to the fight, and with his Golem and high-level Onyx, he's now a true threat to be reckoned with. Unless you have a Grass-type, but still. Or is the new strongest trainer Misty, with her Starmie, Golduck, Lapras, and Seedra? Or is the war-hardened Lieutenant Surge now going to be the biggest threat you've ever faced? While the path to get here may have been more linear in terms of gameplay, the story is different every time. Now, sure, 
comparing to older generations isn't a foolproof example. There's no way that Giovanni should be the easiest gym leader, but that's more based on how the story was written. Here, with the stories and gyms being separate, you can do anything. You can start in the snowy mountains or the large lakes of the arid desert. Whichever gym you go to first will be like fighting a gym leader anywhere else, meaning that there are eight potential first gym leaders, eight potential second, all the way up, leading to the game being infinitely more replayable, as every single time you play, you'll experience the game in a new way. Your, your adventure will be different every single time. And if you're worried about the ace Pokemon of the gym leader not being fully evolved, or it will, but it will be underleveled, just make their ace Pokemon single stage. We already know that Grusha uses Satitan, and I believe the leaks have said that this generation has the most single stage Pokemon yet. Maybe that's so it can be any level. The possibilities with scaling gyms are practically endless. With the other example, once you defeat any of the stronger gyms in the order, doesn't really matter. By having them scale, there are thousands of combinations that could be worthwhile in a playthrough and will make every playthrough you do or even watch online completely different and unique. So why do some people call that level of freedom railroading and linear? Well, it boils down to how they want to use the term. Yes, scaling gyms makes for a less unique difficulty scale or linear gameplay, but it makes the possibilities for storytelling far wider. Yes, non-scaling gyms provide a unique and genuine challenge, but it means the majority of players will either ignore the ability to challenge them in any order and play from lowest to highest, locking them into a more linear story, or they'll grind up and sweep the game, like I've seen some people say would be the objectively best way to play the game. Now, to be clear, neither of these are a wrong way to play, but as someone who likes to play these games over and over, Non-linear storytelling beats non-linear challenges every time. Now, can scaling gyms exist without breaking the game and making it too easy? I think yes. I think it'll lead to the very interesting moment of, okay, the next gym leader is 10 levels above my current level. I need to go out past the low-level Pokemon into the wilds to find some really strong Pokemon to train against and catch in preparation for my next gym. That, to me, sounds far more fun than grinding up to beat one tough gym and then sweeping everything else. Now, do I think we're going to get scaling gyms? As much as I'd like to see it, I don't think it's going to happen, which is a shame. What I do think that we're going to get is gyms of different tiers. Three gyms around the same level, and then another three at a higher level, and then the last two being the toughest or something like that. That way, much like with Sabrina and Koga back in the day, there will be different challenges at similar levels, giving you options. It's not the limitless replayability I would like, but given that in Sword and Shield gym leaders were somewhat like this, with the first three all being just a few levels apart with their teams, it's not completely ridiculous, and I feel that this is the most likely way things will go, with a large level gap between them, letting you play through the other two story modes in the game as you level up and prep for the next tier of gyms. So if I don't think we're getting scaling, why did I make this video? Mostly to show that gym scaling isn't a terrible idea. I think that if it were included, it would make for the most interesting, replayable, unique Pokemon experience since Pokemon Conquest is something I hope they consider including in a future open world Pokemon game. To those of you who stuck with me to the end of this, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video and want me to do more opinion pieces like this, please like the video and say something down in the comments so I know to make more videos like this one. And if you agree that gym scaling should be a thing, share the video. Let's get the idea of good scaling Pokemon gyms out there and maybe, just maybe, we can see it happen in the future.